Thanks for staying with us. Referencing a publication from The Guardian, from Europe to Asia to Africa, the tension triggered by the Russian-Ukrainian um, conflict peaked as President Vladimir Putin called the bluff of his critics and other global leaders and declared a full-scale military operation in Ukraine. And across the global and investment clusters, the global economy was rattled causing investors unmatched losses. Foreign exchange, that's um, forex cryptocurrency uh, markets, which um, trade rounds the clock, were the first casualties of this um, invasion. Russia's invasion of Ukraine also rattled global financial and energy markets, causing oil prices to spike and financial instruments to fall after Russian troops moved into Ukraine by air, land, and sea. Now, pumping for, uh, far below the 1.8 million barrel per day, um, projections in 2022 appropriation raising crude oil price, which should have provided revenue windfall of an extra $43 on every bar barrel from the $62 um, dollar per barrel uh, envisaged in 2022 fiscal document now poses fresh challenges for the country due to importation and um, payment of subsidy on premium motor spirit. So what does this mean? All this grammar that I've just spoken. <laughs> what does this mean for us as a country and the global economy, right? And how is this impacting this ongoing fuel scarcity that's been happening that is almost looking like there's going to be an extension based on all of these things that happened, right? Um, how is that um, impacting all of this? Now, uh, remember, you can join the conversation. Let's hear what you have to say. Um, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa 1 with the hashtag Wayshow. I'm going to bring in our guest in like one second. <laughs> but LC seems not interested in this thing, you know. But, but what's your take when you first heard that Russia had gone to make the first move to Ukraine? What was, what was your reaction, honestly? Because you know you said something in the group. I will expose you now if you don't you say know the truth. You don't, you don't want to hear what I said in the group. <laughs> and uh, let's, let's not have that conversation. I'm here to listen to our guests speak. Um, I, 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 I mean, I feel like my opinion on the whole drama is not a wrong one, yeah? But it's not a popular one as well. Yeah. And you know how tired I am today. Mm -hmm. So I don't need backlash. <laughs> My darling Ukraine people. Well, Mani, what do you think? What was your initial thought and what do you think? Okay, so my initial thought was that um, Russia was being unreasonable, being troublesome, being a bully. Mm -hmm. That was my initial thought. Mm -hmm. But when I, you know, went into the whole details, details I saw that they are doing what any other person would do. So from... Um, the survey that we have, US, they have launched 81% of the wars that we've seen, you know, for as long as, from 1945 to 2001, mm. 81% by US. Mm. So who, who, are, who are they to talk now? So now they're silent and people are wondering, like, why is Biden not talking? Mm. Why is he quiet when Biden can end everything by just saying that um, they will not be that accepted in, into NATO? Mm. But he's quiet because they've done worse. So if you know your history, you will know that they're just doing what they want to do. I don't think what's happening right now mm. um, with um, Russia and Ukraine would happen with America and another country. And things will not have got, you know, gotten worse, escalated, escalated yeah, quicker mm. you know, than this or sooner. So I, I, for, for now, I think that it's okay. What's happened? It's, there will always be casualties, mm. pity, mm. but these things are bound to happen. Yeah, and, and like the yeah. quote said, right, when you think of crisis, crisis is not in itself a bad thing. Yes. What crisis just helps you to amplify is you see that there's actually a problem and you now start to find creative ways to solve the problem, right? Yes. That's how I see it, but maybe I'm not the expert. So let me bring in our guest. <laughs> Bolao Olojede is a resourceful corporate executive with, uh, with work experience spanning over 28 years, 14 of which were spent as a C-level executive. He is a consummate finance and accountant, uh, account professional with extensive exposure to marketing operations and management at various levels. Uh, his Industry exposes um, exposure rather cuts across professional services, investment banking and advisory service, corporate banking, print media, education, healthcare, oil and gas, and telecom. 
1991 graduate of Obafemi Awolo University, Lefe, and an associate of the Institute of Chattered, Chattered Accountants of Nigeria. He is an alumnus of the Stephen F. Austin State University, Texas, where he graduated top of his MBA class, correct? Now, he is currently Executive Director with DMA Advisory and Management Services Limited that is located at, on, um, at Victoria Island here in Lagos. And he's joined us live in studio. Now, wow. <laughs> now, wow. If, we, if we now look for the full profile, ah, you, we are... We're not going to leave here with us. <laughs> <laughs> it is well. Thank you so much, Gola, for joining uh, us. It's a pleasure, Ishmael. Nice to be here. You know, see, we are, I'm sure we, you listen to us, you will say, what, is, what are these words saying? We are just speaking jargon, but let us, we are saying it from our lane, man. Are we correct in any sense? Like, you're what not, is going on now? speaking jargon. Yeah. Um, you're giving These opinions. are not speaking yeah. Yeah. And, and it, makes, it makes sense. Yes. Um, Ukraine, Russia. It's been there for a while. Yeah. Just that nobody thought it would escalate to this. that fast mm. this time around. Uh, I mean, the guy was still, until the previous day, when he went into Ukraine, he was still saying, I'm not going to invade. Yeah. And there were people who actually believed, but there were also people who did not believe. Because I remember America consistently said, he is going to mm -hmm. invade Ukraine. Mm -hmm. That's because they have the intelligence. Yeah. And they can no. also plot the trajectory of how it will, it will behave. Th these people study uh, the profile of those kind of leaders, so they know the how it will behave in, in some of those circumstances. Well, having said that, is like she put it, a bully, actually. Yeah, Putin it's is a bullish. Bully. Yeah. Really? Well, he yeah, is a bully. Sure. So are we not being emotional with this analogy, calling him a bully, based on, you know, because I saw a, a video of a professor, I think at Yale, that was talking about a history, something historical that happened yeah. in, yes, in 1950. That's, that's Professor Bosna. Yes. Um, it's, it's, it's a French, American, Russian. He has this multiple nationality and, and he's a very sound guy he's also a journalist by the mm. way you know what it brings to the table is the historical perspective yes and most likely the one you watch was actually recorded in 2018. Mm. wow yes well if you if you listen to the pattern of what he said it was just as if he saw tomorrow yes. Yes. that this is how it was going to play out because putin has been there all this while and at some point, trying to reach out to the West, they were not warming up to him. Rather, there seems to be a certain level of aggression they were putting forward. And the aggression is moving the frontiers of NATO towards him. Yes. Yeah, so that's why you know. I said... And the maybe. reference will always be, in 1962, when Russia wanted to do this in Cuba, what was the reaction of Kennedy? Yes. If Kennedy told the... To the, step down. Said, tell the, yeah. the, the ship to turn back. Turn back. Otherwise, America will hit that ship now and destroy it. Mm. Of course, the ship turned back. And 1962 did not happen in Cuba. Cuba is about 90-something miles to America. Yeah. Now, uh, the, the signs are there that Ukraine is becoming moving close to the West. And he might join NATO. There have been several, you know, romance with NATO. And he might just join NATO any moment. Now, when you join NATO, it means they can come and put a military base. Of in your, in your country. It's not about the So if you bring a military base to Ukraine, uh, beholding Russia. Russia, how are they supposed to react? I heard people say, but they have not joined NATO. I said, no. It is in Nigeria that we act and wait till it happens. Mm -hmm. yeah. In those kind of countries, they are not going to wait until you yeah. join. Yeah. They would rather be preemptive. You say, don't yes. even think about it. I think this was preventable because at I the beginning, so. it seems as if a firm commitment that we're not going to join NATO will have prevented this. Thank you. And I wonder why. But the world, more or less, I would say the West, hmm. push Ukraine to that brink. And uh, at some sure. point, people thought, did they, did they leave Ukraine all by itself? Because at some point, America was offering evacuation to, to uh, Zelensky to say, if you want to come to America, you we know, can, with we, your, can bring, yeah. we can bring you here. Mm. And the guy was like, look, Give me am I going to leave all my people behind yeah. and go to I, America? I don't need After a ride. The, I, I need ammunition. I need ammunition, <laughs> not a ride. And I, 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 I like that. I, I, I found that quite profound. That was tweetable. You know, but all the same. <laughs> When we remember that it is lives that are at the end of this, you know, send children, we don't yeah. know what this is Casualties. all about. 
are casualties of this. Uh, that is why uh, he, 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 the bullish side of things comes into play and, you know, every normal human being will be like, oh, these people are suffering. Mm. Can we just stop it already? You know, but, okay, go ahead. Yeah, but like you said, you can, emotions will always play. But when we're talking about things like this, you can't expect the leaders to be emotional mm. because no. you won't even expect your leader let, let me to say be something emotional. about those yeah. you see in, in that space international politics and decisions the definition of right and wrong is totally different he doesn't follow the abrahamic uh, religion yes. definition <laughs> he has no morality at the same time yeah. that's why somebody can kill children and not be yes. bothered Yes. What drives it is what is called national interest. Yeah. And that national interest is defined by the leader as he so decides to define it. Mm. Sure. So, uh, so where I was coming with all of this now, do you think that the move for other countries, other world leaders to say, you know what, yesterday we saw a video of SWIFT saying that they are going to cut off all services, they cannot uh, access international funds, like if people want to pay into a Russian-owned company, everything will be shut down. Do you think that it, that is a, a, a good move in the right direction to stop Putin from going ahead with this invasion? Because I just read in the news before coming on air, they are really targeting getting the, the president of Ukraine, right? Because um, every, most of the attacks are towards the capital. So okay. it is targeted. They know where they want to hit mm -hmm. hardest, and that's where they're do going. But do you think all these sanctions that are being put in place, do you think it would even get, get us anywhere? It will put some pressure yeah. on Putin. Okay. There's no yeah. doubt about that. Though Putin is also trying to fight back. He's trying to do that. Uh, this morning I saw uh, a message that this, the equivalent of like the central bank of Russia had said securities brokers should not be allowed to exit securities in Russia. Mm. So if you are holding Russian instrument now, you can't get out of that instrument. You're mm. stuck with it. Mm. So are we going to start having provisioning, which means will people start writing off the Russian instrument that they hold? Mm. This evening, there are counter moves. I, I learned that Shell has pulled out of Gazprom. Gazprom mm. is a major uh, uh, Russian behemoth with gas investment and you know, all like gas generally. And Shell is an invest investor to the extent of, it's a partner, about 20 something percent joint venture. Oh. It's pulling out of That's that. That's a big one. So SWIFT, like you mentioned, is the financial language for international trade. Yes. yes. Once you are caught off SWIFT, it means people cannot pay you, you cannot pay people. Mm -hmm. That is going to affect the yes. economy of Russia. So yes. all these things will come together to put okay. some level of yes. pressure mm -hmm. on Putin. The best thing or the, the right way to go is that we must still all get around the table and talk, talk. this over. It will never be, it will never end on the field. Because now that you yeah. have talked about share, we now bring it home to the oil uh, fuel crisis that we are facing mm -hmm. here in Nigeria. But we'll take a very short break. When we return from the break, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Now, if you just tune in, we're having an in-depth look at fuel crisis in Nigeria and the war between Russia and um, Ukraine with Bolaho. Now, please let us share what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 So, Elsie, you had a question before yeah. I'll come back again. Um, so, this conversation is interesting, yeah, and for people who are very interested in this conversation. Uh, but for people who are like me, they're wondering, um, why should I be worried about Ukraine and Russia? Now, what would you say me? to them? How does it affect us as Nigerians? Yeah. You see, globalization has its wrong side. Mm -hmm. Of course, we enjoy the right side. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, but the wrong side is what will make that war affect you and I. Mm -hmm. Russia is the third largest exporter of wheat. Ukraine is the fifth largest exporter of wheat in the world. Wow. When you combine those two together, and mm -hmm. there is a problem with getting that wheat out because mm -hmm. there are problems in the Black Sea. Mm -hmm. Vessels are not willing to go to the Black Sea yeah. to co convey anything. So that supply is taken out of what the world uses. Mm -hmm. Even the bricklayer in the village who likes to eat uh, bread and mm -hmm. beans mm -hmm. will feel the impact at some point. Wow. 
Wow. Yeah, yeah, because those guys are heavy producers of wheat. And then the other part is the, is the oil, the, mm. the, the, the PMS that we use mm. a lot Which we here in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. You know, because, uh, because of the war, vessels are worried about that axis. So if I have a vessel, I don't want to pick product from that side. I don't want to go there. Now, there are vessels that are already there that are even concerned about crossing the Black Sea to mm. go somewhere else. So they're going to be stuck there yeah. for a while trying to be careful. Then when you're doing vessel-related transactions, there's an insurance side of things. Insurers are handing off. They don't want to insure anything that has to do with a vessel that will be going in that direction. The problem with that is that prices of hiring vessels mm -hmm. will start to go up. Mm -hmm. yeah. The demand for the available vessels will start to go up. If you are a Russian vessel now, nobody wants to hire you. So you take all the Ukrainian vessels, you take all the Russian vessels out of circulation. All that puts the pressure on freight. So in Nigeria, that buys a PMS and brings it all the way to mm -hmm. the country, we need to pay more in, 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 fr in freight cost to, to ship that good from mm -hmm. wherever they're buying it to Nigeria. Now, that adds on to the landing cost yes. of the product. Mm. Well, we are still in the subsidy regime. Mm. So it also means that the subsidy implication we will inch up. Yeah. It may also affect the, the, the dynamics. Look, look, look at part of what Nigeria does. We give people crude for, in exchange for, for refined, refined products. products yes. Now, we are a bit backward on you know, meeting some of these uh, obligations on our side because even our OPEC quota, we are unable to meet it. Mm -hmm. OPEC quota of about 1.7 million barrels per day, we are barely doing 1.4. So uh, as the world is rejoicing that oh, oil has crossed $100 per barrel, Nigeria is not make it, making the best of it because we are not even meeting our quota. And even when we now meet the quota, we, that's why we are not meeting our quota. The subsidy is still there. Mm -hmm. And the subsidy is rising. Mm -hmm. As the oil price rises, the Cost. subsidy rises. So we're not making good money from the production but side. Yet we're but yet we're paying more on mm -hmm. the subsidy side. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it's, uh, it's, it, it, it is something that is affecting everybody. anybody who is in Lagos today. Mm. I, I, I had something in, in, uh, somewhere on uh, Lagos about on this morning. On my way back, when I look at Google Map and I saw how long I was going to, I just went somewhere and sat down and started eating Amala somewhere, you know, and took a bit of time before I, I hit the road back because the foil is not there. So why are you going to just I, waste, you know, the little that you have? Coming tell me to the, the show. Tell me the story of my life. Yeah. <laughs> I, I came in from Lekki to VI here. And when I saw the queue, I was asking my driver, I said, are we going to go home today? <laughs> you know, because it's crazy. You yeah. don't even have, you just managed to get some. We went to queue today that we didn't find. Then now you have to use the little you have to stay in traffic. You see, you know? and, and uh, the, it, it doesn't appear as if we're getting the full correct information. Look at, look yes. at Can this. you please break down why we wow. still have an existing fuel crisis in Nigeria? Because... You have said, I mean, they've said that, yes, there was an importation of bad products, right? Which they felt, okay, within the week, whatever, it was going to be um, either evacuated or they were going to become, bring more products to blend it so that it would be usable, right? But all of those things, none of those things happened. Because now, it seemed like at that Saturday, the fuel crisis had died down. All of a sudden, on Sunday, they were, they were, is it that we are panic buying or there's actually a fuel shortage? There is a shortage. Because you, if you were just panic buying, then stations will be selling. Just mm. that there will be a lot of people trying to get in the station at the same time yeah. to buy. But what you have is that there are several stations without fuel. Mm. So the few that have, have the product have a long queue and all, all over the place. There is, um, we're not being told mm. the full, we're not getting the full picture. We're not being told the real truth. Here is it. The country has reserves, so strategic reserve. Mm. And the whole essence of strategic reserve is that if you run into supply problems, you can deploy that strategic reserve to bridge the gap while you regularize, while that supply chain problem is regularized. Yeah. So what happened? Where is the space of our own reserve? 
Is it so bad? Is our efficiency level so bad that over two, three weeks period, we cannot regularize a supply chain problem that involved bad fuel? How many liters are this bad fuel? How many, how many metric tons of it? That we cannot evacuate it and then deploy from the strategic reserve. So uh, there are bits and pieces of these stories that are not Clear. adding up. Mm. You know? uh, and that is the, the, the problem with that, when you're not transparent about this kind of story, you give a room for all sort of uh, conjectures. Some people are already saying, oh, they're just trying to trick us into subsidy removal. You know, when the thing gets so bad, if it gets very bad, hmm. then fuel price will automatically bought, move yeah, up by I itself. I bought fuel, mm -hmm. 250 naira per litre. At this juncture, they should remove subsidy. There's no point. <laughs> please, somebody has been trying to reach us on the WhatsApp line. We don't take calls on the WhatsApp line, please. Just send us a message, um, an SMS or WhatsApp. Okay, I just, um, there's a breaking news concerning this. Mm -hmm. That, um, you know, for those of you asking how it's going to affect you, he talked about even it affecting the bricklayers. Mm -hmm. Breaking news, Russia unveiled a nuclear weapon called Satan II liquid field nuclear missile capable of destroying everything breathing on Earth. So where, will, where will Putin be? It will destroy him too. <laughs> so we put Putin and the minister will be now just appear before God and uh, mm. now. Yeah. You see, some of these steps he takes, mm. there's, yeah. he sees a benefit to it. Really? And what will be the benefit to launching this, this Satan? Yeah. Let's assume that there is that Satan. Is, yeah, yeah. It will never be launched because everybody will be wiped out. So what's the point? Maybe there's no um, ark taking us home. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is not funny. Pardon me. Uh, I, I, okay. I think the scare also yeah. works. Mm. So he, he throws all those. It can be a strategy to scare us. Yeah. Putin. Ah. Please stop it. calling the WhatsApp line. For Let goodness sake. <laughs> stop calling the WhatsApp line. It's for, it's for WhatsApp message, messages only. But well, on. So help me break down the situation. Do you see us coming out of this fuel crisis anytime soon in Nigeria? Given what is even happening right now. We, I mean, I hear that Russia supplies the whole of Europe gas. Correct. Right? So this one now, there's a big, there's going to be a gas big crisis, issue. mm -hmm. uh, gas issues for them. My sister has activated her chimney, she said, because we cannot be doing, <laughs> we have to do firewood <laughs> heating. She has brought out all her barbecue things that in case there's no gas, she will go local. She will go local. You grill your chicken, use charcoal to cook your rice and your beans, you know, and all of that. Everybody seems to be a bit apprehensive, but where do you see... How do you see this affecting? Because now it seems like this fuel crisis is not living. Because mm -hmm. with what I'm seeing, I mean, I was speaking to a friend of mine today, and he was telling me that the shipment that he was that was supposed to come into Nigeria today, based on these swift issues, you know, they can't come in because they cannot. How would they be paid? So how, how would they be paid? You know, so Incidentally, when you look at the list of people we buy refined products from, you also see Russia Federation. No, it's a small bit. Mm -hmm. So from time to time, too, we buy a small bit from them. But most of our imports are mm -hmm. actually from Europe, the Netherlands, Belgium. Those are the places where. But we buy, we buy from India mm -hmm. sometimes, mm -hmm. and I even saw Latvia on the list. So some countries around that area too, we buy from them. Yes. And now that there is trouble around that side, forget about anything coming, coming from, from that, that side. Wow. wow. Yeah. So we need to concentrate on our European uh, uh, market, market, and be able to bring, or even from South America. Mm -hmm and be able to bring products to Nigeria. But my mm. concern is, because all those things will take a little bit of time. Yes. Mm. So it's Where is this strategic curiously. reserve mm. that NNPC said it they has? Have. When will it deploy it? And why is it taking so, why is it so difficult mm. to mm. deploy it? So you, is it that we do not have a strategic reserve? Uh -uh. <laughs> because uh. I don't we, understand. We sh I want to believe we have. <laughs> Because if we have a strategic reserve, you know now we have, or you think we should have, or that we have. Normally, we that should is the, have. That is the yeah. And they said, they said we have. They said, they we, have. Have. They said we have. So we will wait. So why? So where? When are they waiting to deploy the strategic reserve? When is it a crisis enough for them to deploy the strategic reserve? Exactly. So when is it a crisis enough for well, us to deploy this? I'm not saying. You know, I, I've listened to one or two people, even people that we know very well. Yeah. Know, uh, come on the TV and say some things, and I'm like, ah, 
for your for your mouth. Uh -huh. you know. uh, but <laughs> you, you know, some of those things are also privileged information that is you don't come to yeah. the air and yes, start talking, say, and start yeah. talking about mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I hope that we will just that they will just have compassion on the average Nigerian <laughs> and let's have some release from the strategic reserve. Meanwhile, that subsidy problem is not going to go away. Yeah, it keeps but, getting higher. But my, my, my position on subsidy is we should stop making it a we against them problem. Yeah. Because it is a Nigerian problem. problem. If we don't solve it, this house is going down. So, what, so what's, 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 what's your solution what's to that solution? subsidy thing? The solution mm. is that we have to put all the cards on the table. Okay. What do I mean? Number one, we don't even know how much we consume in this country. That's where it all starts from. Mm. Can we validate all the data yeah. that we're talking about? There was a month they said it went up to 93 million barrels per day. It was 72, it was 54. Doing that is so the what is of it? Pricing corruption. Thank you. We don't even see that corruption? happening. Ha. If we don't deal with that matter, mm. this house is going to crash on us. Okay. You saw the way government went back to go and start asking for 2.5 trillion to mm -hmm. pay subsidy. Mm -hmm. Now, when they were asking for 2.5 trillion to pay subsidy, uh, Russia, Ukraine has not happened. Mm. Now, Russia, Ukraine has happened. Mm. That 2.5 trillion is not even going to be it's enough to pay like the subsidy. The money that we're so we're for. saying we've been borrowing. We are borrowing an additional 2.5 because we don't have that 2.5. We're, we're going, going to have to, to borrow it. So it means we're going to have to borrow more. Yeah. So we must sit down across the table, put all the cards, let everybody know that this is it too, and solve that problem. Mm. The corruption that subsidy represents, if they open that can and you see 10% of it, you will pass out. We must deal with that monster. How we will do it, because there is, there is a fear of the impact, the economic impact, especially on the doubt. I was going to yeah. ask, what's the worst case scenario for fuel per liter when we do um, take out that subsidy? What's the worst case scenario? Maybe in the 400, 300, 300 and something. Because as it is now, yeah. with the current fuel crisis and the black market, it's we're, already yes, going we're, already, we're already edging towards that amount of money. So why can't we just brace up and say, you know what, let us kill this monster. It's a, and, you know, it's a difficult the, All the no, stakeholders must agree. It's a yeah. difficult See, bracing up. No politicians so who are, 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 are the Nigerians Number one, the politicians for yes. themselves. Are they ready? There's no politician who wants to do something that will lead to riot. Yes. When because the election is him. approaching. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a, it will cost him political capital. So True. you don't even want to touch it. So the politician must come to that table. There is the labor. Nigerian Labour Congress, if you remove that thing, we're going to shut down this country. Call the Labour to the table. Sure. There are the importers themselves. There is the NMPC. It's a bring yeah, but, but they've sat on this table for years. They've sat on this table from time to time. Most of our discussions yeah. have been in silos. So hmm. I meet with Labour separately. I discuss this separately. So Let's bring about everybody, everybody together. together. And then the honesty, put all the cards on the table. This is the danger. This is the problem. And let people come up with solutions. In fact, that labor that wants to file, ask labor, this is the problem, eh? What is your solution? It okay, let me an take some messages, sure. yeah. right? Um, no name, but says the West are very hypocritical on this issue. Will America tolerate having Russia missiles stationed in Mexico? Ukraine created this war on itself. I totally agree with the analysis of your guest. Um, Another one says, you are really doing a great job. I'm really enjoying your program, watching from Delta States. Thank you. Uh, Kwale, precisely. Oh, well, Kwale. to my own point mm -hmm. of view on this first crisis, it's just a political strategy for this upcoming election and also to remove fuel <laughs> subsidy. Um, okay. Another person says, please be adding your name so I can thank you personally. <laughs> says, I don't know where we are going to in this country. 200 naira in Ogun is even better compared to here in Kafanchan. Fuel has today become 240 naira. As for Russia and Ukraine, I pray that God will intervene. We bought fuel because mm. we went to Ocean State over the weekend. Okay. You know, to, so we bought fuel at 250 naira per liter. So right? this person continues to say, sorry, please guys, let's still talk about cooking gas prices. Here in Kwale, where the company LPG that refines for the country is, we are buying it at 700 naira per kg. Okay. Over to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, gas prices has improved over the last few months. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, it promises yes, to I be better. So. Because yeah. what you now have is the Nigerian liquefied natural gas is saying, look, I will focus on meeting the domestic demand. Mm -hmm. Initially, it was only allocating a portion to domestic demand because in the past, they said, when I allocated to you, the market did not take it up. Mm -hmm. So I stopped that. Now that uh, I see that the market has the capacity to take, take it up, up, I will allocate all my um, production to uh, the Nigerian market. I believe that should help. However, there are other structural issues. Um, government should take note of, uh, let, me, let me say, I want to believe that they are taking note of those and doing something about it. There's the infrastructure problem. There was a time in this country when, when you do the gas from LNG, LNG is in Bielsa somewhere, they first of all move it to Lagos. And before we can even move it, to, it yes. back to the east, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. So how do you do something in Bielsa? And you can so if you take it, it straight to the east? <laughs> you know, so there are, because there are no the infrastructure is still, was not is there. Poor, mm. yeah. So and the few uh, ones we had were vandalized. Vandalization. Mm. So we need infrastructure issues. There are also element of tax, whatever. But I don't think uh, we should touch that tax. Let it be there. But let's deal with infrastructure matters. I know better. Mm. So the quality man, eh? he go better. Is mm. no, his be name better. is Kingsley. Thank you, Kingsley. Thank you, Kingsley. So if you had something to say now, because we're wrapping up, we have like mm -hmm. barely two minutes to go. Oh. Um, what would you hope to see with this Ukraine-Russia issue? What would you hope to see? I hope to see in the next few days um, some positive discussions uh, that will you know, diffuse that the tension, the tension yeah. so that the world can move forward. The world is too global. You. This thing could have been done 30 years ago with less impact. But now we're too connected. We're too connected. You can see here in Nigeria, we're, JJ, feeling, the we're, we're feeling the impact. Mm. You talk about gas to Europe. Mm. Once Europe, there's no immediate uh, substitution mm. for that gas. Yeah. So even when you're saying uh, uh, SWIFT, they must make provision for how they will be able to pay for that gas. So otherwise, you cut out the entire Europe. Winter is not totally over exactly. yet. Exactly. It's not for That's this point. Uh, it's, it's going to be so, terrible. <laughs> it's going to be terrible. So the world must come together and fix this problem. Yeah, absolutely. Then for us, the our crisis, our fuel crisis. <laughs> when what? are we going to get some Our some reserve relief? is coming into it, action. It depends on... <laughs> there are two, two ways to this. Number one, if they are pulling us in the direction of making us realize that so we can actually pay more than 165. Mm. Then, then it's working. Then, then it's, it's working and you might not see fuel. Mm. Yes. Time. Because if it's, it, if it needs it's, to drag. If it's a plan. By the time you buy it for 500, you'll be saying, come and buy for 300. And this is You're the plan of this administration it's so because yeah. the election is by around the corner. I, but you see, I the crisis I, I is I not know. in favor yeah. of election. No. Mm. If I'm a politician, if I'm PMB well, or if I'm APC, mm -hmm. I'm not going to do something that will cause uh answers again no. mm. i won't do it rather i will want to go in the direction of give me 2.5 million build trillion let me use it to pay subsidy it's yes. better for me and you know they are trying to gather money now so mm. elsie your analysis is not working no. <laughs> <You're being comments. laughs> mm. all right i think we have a final comment that we can go so what is still kinsley it says well based on my research on that i was talking to one of the filling station owner and I was told the federal government is supplying other countries. Why we buy it at black markets from them? Because what they are exporting to other countries is not enough. We don't ah, know about that. We don't know about that. that. Yeah. If you talk of smuggling, yes. I mean, if it is foreign or something in Ghana, it means if I can get the fuel to Ghana, why not? Mm. I'll make money. But that will not be government officially yeah. doing that. It's, 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 it's an because. unofficial thing. Sure. So you cannot, you cannot accuse the government of that. I've seen it happen. The bank is a big deal. Uh -huh. <laughs> they take our fuel to Benin. But thank you. I think we've had a fantastic conversation. Yes, we are hoping to bring you back because we have to talk about how yeah. we can harness the potential of gas in, in this country. I keep, I mean, it has always been and it will always be an issue. That's that we are, big we are thing flaring yeah. gas when gas every, is supposed to power everything, yeah. right? It doesn't make any sense. But thank you so much, Bolan. We had a fantastic pleasure, I hope you, you'll come back again. <laughs> uh, thank you, Manny. Pleasure, thank you, Elsie. Now, before we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagram. It's at Wayshow Africa one um at Way Show Africa with the hashtag Wayshow. Or follow the hashtag Wayshow rather. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, 
follow all our engagement on social media like share invite your families and friends to watch a full commercial i think is it first casting there's scattering my brain <laughs> 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 now if you missed today's quote here it is again crisis and deadlocks when they occur have at least this advantage that they force us to think mm. so i just hope that nigeria is thinking amidst this crisis hmm. we can see how we can change well mm. We're being hopeful here. They're thinking. Yes, yeah, so we're, we're hoping they're thinking. We'll see you guys tomorrow live at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.